The Unshackled Waves, episode 149. Broadcasting from Melbourne, Australia, this is The Unshackled Waves with Tim Wills. Brought to you by theunshackled.net. Hello everyone, great to have your company. Well, we continue to discover no shortage of alt media personalities in Australia, which is great to see. Another Aussie YouTuber we have come across is Ben Shand, who is the Dusty Bogan. He is based in Brisbane and his channel is a mixture of rants about political news in Australia and field reports from public events and rallies in Brisbane. I thought it would be good to introduce him to the channel and get to know him a bit more. Ben, welcome to the show. How you going, mate? Oh, I'm um, good, thank you. Now, your uh, channel name is the, the Dusty Bogan, but uh, you're actually a New Zealander, so you've uh, basically uh, culturally appropriated the, the, the Bogan identity, which is a uniquely uh, Australian uh, term. So I'm interested in your uh, story, how you went from a New Zealander to becoming this uh, Aussie Bogan. Uh, um, I guess it's... Uh... When I was younger, we we lived in Australia. I was born in New Zealand. We moved to Australia when I was really young. And um, then we moved back to New Zealand for five years. And I, I always had an Aussie accent in New Zealand. So I was the Aussie kid in New Zealand. So it's sort of, um, then when we came back, I guess it was, I've always, I guess I've always been an Aussie even though I'm, I'm a New Zealander, but I, I love New Zealand. Don't get me wrong. When, you know, when I lived in New Zealand, I loved it. Living in Australia, I love it. Yeah, I guess like for me, it was, I was watching Dave Chappelle and he was talking about Donald Trump. He was doing a skit about it. And um, he was like, look at all these dusty bogans in that, uh, dusty white folks in that utes pulling up. And he was talking about when he went to vote. And he was, he was just calling them dusty white people and, you know, these uh, Trump supporters. I thought that was hilarious, you know. And uh, At that stage, I'd already posted up a few videos and, um, you know, a few lefties would crack the shits and call me a bogan and, oh, you speak slow or you write it all this crap. So I'm like, oh, just, just embrace the... Um, you know, I just embrace that and think it, I thought it was quite funny. Uh, so it, it's it's funny how leftists say we've got to be, you know, politically correct when it comes to other races, but you're allowed to like slow white people as, you know, bogans or, or, or rednecks. That's perfectly fine. I reckon, see, I, I think um, I like being a bogan. I like the idea of being like a bogan. And in New Zealand, they call you like a pakiha, you know, whatever. And I think like, well, I'm not going to be ashamed of that. I'm proud to be, you know, a white dude and uh, maybe a bit rough around the edges or whatever, you know, no. And uh, I think to like going out there putting videos, you know, I don't want to come across as the smartest dude or the greatest communicator, you know what I mean? I'm like just the average dude, just an average dude who's like uh, sick of the political crap, crap like, the nonsense you know and what, and what do you think is the uh if we're, uh, we're on this show so i'll use the word stereotype what is the the stereotypical bogan do you think i mean what do you like doing that that makes you uh, a bogan <laughs> oh i don't know for me i mean i work in construction and i have a ute i make my own homebrew like rum and beer and you know, I'm always in the backyard when my mates come around. It's like sit around, have a beer around the fire or barbecue. And I don't know, that's it. You know, it's really just, I just live a normal, what I consider a normal life. But it, I mean, and I'm not sure if, um, you know, is uh, having traditional conservative values considered bogan? I, I don't know. Like, I don't think so. Like, uh, yeah. Bogans are very diverse when it comes to, I think, uh, v uh, values. Uh, to, to me, it's more that you're 
uh, carefree. You you just want to be left alone and you know don't want you know someone coming in, whether it's the the government or some uh, uh, academic or so called expert coming in saying no, your life's wrong. Uh, we know better. Mm. Oh, that's for sure. You know. It's the, the super intellects who are like telling us all how to do everything. I, I won't, like I say at work, I, I won't be surprised if the government is a manual of how to walk us in a few years. Like it's, and that's what these people are. They've become experts at everything, you know, and Bogans just want, Bogans are like the DIY people, you know, the guy who's going to fix his own house and his own ute and look after his own crap without, I don't need, you know, we don't need the government doing everything for us or telling us how to do everything, you know? Now you firmly embraced uh, being Australian, but you said you still uh, look fondly upon uh, New Zealand. Uh, do you still uh, ke uh, keep it, keep abreast of what's happening uh, back there? Oh, uh, mainly just through family, um, but I guess that would be more so like economically what's going on, like how my how the family's going with their work and. You know what's it like down now I sort of hit them up and ask my family and but politically whatever i just sort of i do kind of stay out of it i know that they've had their election and that um lefty sheila's in now so <laughs> uh, <laughs> i love the description yeah i mean you know a lot of um friends uh who i've got made to have moved back and forth, you know, and, and they've said how housing prices are out of control and where my dad lives, he's in a small country town in the South Island and like their house prices are freaking, you know, they're so expensive and these little towns, they barely have, you know, there's not even a great deal of industry of jobs in these communities and if you just wonder like what the hell's going on down there. Yeah, I was in New Zealand to, to cover their uh, election last year in September and definitely housing uh, affordability was one of the, the big issues. We think it's bad here in Australia, but uh, over there, especially in Auckland, it's just insane. And it's New Zealand's all, always viewed as more socially progressive uh, than Australia. The, the politicians and media may be, but I found the, the people themselves, they're, they're actually uh, quite conservative. Yeah, I think... I know my family, you sort of, I think about it here, like the John era, John Howard era, and you, if you were trying to talk to a conservative about an issue that, you know, they're kind of so conservative that they're like, we don't want to talk about it. We don't want to go there. Do you know what I mean? Do you ever, do you ever get that feel? Like, I reckon if you're a, the classical conservative of the life, we don't want to talk about these issues, just leave it alone. You know, the, they're, like, they're the kind of conservatives I think that are down there. They they probably do have the, the values. They're just like, oh, I don't want to annoy anyone. They just keep the peace, you know. They're kind of like truly socially conservative in them in themselves. Like I, I sort of noticed that down there. Now, I want to uh, uh, turn to uh, your channel now. Now, it's a mixture of both uh, rants and uh, reports from out in the field. Now, uh, your rants, they go for anywhere from about five to, to ten minutes. Are they scripted at all? Do you have, like, a running sheet, or is it just, you know, straight from the heart? Usually, I'll be at work with my workmates, and we'll just be talking crap. You know, we'll read some... Uh, posts on Facebook and we'll be like oh that pisses me off and we'll be joking around about stuff all day and then I'll say I'll go home and I'll do a rant about it you know and I'll, I'll just do a one, one uh, once off top of my head rant and that's it if it's if it's shocking or I make a mistake, I'll just that will do so it's it's definitely unrefined 
Yeah, uh, that's uh, that's definitely a, a good talent you've got there because uh, uh, it takes uh, it, it takes a lot of skill to be able to just you know rant and not get not get stuck not um and ah uh, like I uh, sometimes do and uh, be able to get all your uh, arguments and reasons out in one go. Yeah, sometimes I'll I'll even post it and then someone will comment and I'll say, what are you talking about? And I'll re-watch it and I'll be like, he's right, I did say that, <laughs> you know, like, so, uh, but I guess, um, yeah, I, I mean, I guess I've read enough books and watched and listened to enough crap that I know, I know enough of what I'm saying, do you know what I mean, to have a rant about it, but. Yeah, uh, you should... spinners at my house where we're all yelling at each other, I think, you know? You should actually, I'm not sure if you watch many professional YouTubers, but in their rants, have you noticed that they have about 20 cuts in, in, in the videos? They, they stop and start and you think, wow, that's bad. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've noticed that. I've been told a couple friends said I should do that, but I was like, I'm too bloody lazy. You know, I'm sort of see how it goes. If people want to listen to me have a have a rant, then that's up to them. I'm I'm not really um, looking to impress anyone. Like, it's just sort of here's my rant or here's my interview, and that's it. You get the whole unrefined. Uh, you get it as it is, you know what I mean? Oh, you've already got a substantial following, so uh, there's already quite a lot of people who, who, who like your style just as it is. Yeah, half, half piss sometimes too, mate. <laughs> and you've <laughs> also done uh, Ad in the Field, so you went to the rally to support the white South African farmers, you went to the, the rally against safe schools and also an issue up there, the, the, the farmers and the, the land clearing uh, legislation. Uh, so uh, what's that been uh, like for you? you? You go out there and you speak to, to some of the uh, attendees. Is What's that experience like for you? Oh, I reckon it's good fun. I, I mean, for me, I, I do enjoy what I'm doing or else I wouldn't do it. So hitting up randoms and Usually what I'll do is I'll go to the uh, rally and listen to the speeches. Uh, sometimes I will um, not really, I don't really know all the truth of the matter, you know what I mean? I'm kind of there learning as well. And uh, I'll do an interview and I'm like, oh crap, I'm, I'm genuinely asking questions. Um, you might get a bit of my personal opinion on the matter, but most part I'm learning too. Like. Cause there's some serious crap like that safe school stuff you look at the buddy what we've got in queensland and they said they're gonna anastasia said she's gonna defund um the safe school program and there she is she's bringing in the um the gender bred person and all these other they're rebranding it and they're bringing it in under and parents don't even know so i mean it's for me it's serious crap like some of it you know Oh yeah, with, with with safe schools, the more you learn about it, the more that uh, you're horrified. I mean, the the media makes out uh, people who've got problems with it. Oh, you know, you're you're you know, you're just uh, you know, fundamentalist people. But I reckon though, a lot of the the people who are critical of the um, the the people concerned about safe schools probably haven't read the material themselves. Yeah, I I went um, out to Ipswich and there was a like a community forum and they did a talk about it that's where i learned like the depth of safe schools and it is, it's truly shocking like the people who have written this crap um in the universities that some of them are like i don't know pretty much pedophiles you know it's it's like these are not the kind of people you want writing curriculum and and then they're very clever. Obviously, they try to bring it in as a bloody um, anti-bullying and all this crap, you know, so that they know what they're doing. They're not idiots, hey. 
Now, you're a, a Christian. You weren't uh, raised as a Christian. You converted later in life. You did a video about uh, how uh, you came to, to be one. Can, so can you um, describe it for our audience? Yeah, like, I guess for me, I was an atheist and, um, like, I truly did, I guess I did believe in, like, moral relativism and all this stuff. Like, I didn't, I, everything for me was self-gratification. And, um, and for me, like, I remember my mates invited me to church the first time and it was like, say, like, Hillsong, you, you may know, a uh, bit more of a lively, fun atmosphere. Yeah. My mates invited me. And as, so, like, as someone who was looking uh, looking to, it was all about me, like, self-gratification and whatever. When I went to church, I went as an atheist for years because I was like, I'm going to win. This is where I'm going to win. Like, this is good values, good community. And uh, I guess my life was... Um, you know, we were young guys drinking and fighting and getting up to mischief. So for me, I, I instantly saw it as a, uh, like a great opportunity. And, uh, you know, for me, it was sort of just like, at the start, there, there wasn't too much spiritual, uh, in, in, there wasn't much spiritually in it. It was more like, this is positive and going to be good for my life. And, I guess to like have a kind of a, the psychological side of it where you're like, Oh, forgiveness and having a hope and a, uh, all the metaphors and all the parables and wisdom and all this stuff that kind of becomes spiritual, like psychologically, it's like, where does spirituality and the psychological side, it's kind of so close. You don't really, you can't really tell the difference. You know, it's like a, a meshing of, um, as that aspect of your life grows, you know what I mean? But it's all about, it was all about posit, uh, a positive lifestyle change, uh, you know, pretty much. It's interesting we're being told that uh, Australia and the West is becoming uh, less uh, Christian. Uh, we're living in this postmodern era, but it's, it's interesting, uh, the, the more uh, alt media people I meet in this, uh, uh, in this journey that I've been on the Unshackled, I've come across so many uh, people who've actually converted to, to Christianity. There seems to be a bit of a resurgence. Yeah, well, I mean, I don't know. Every church I've been to is packed, so and plenty of young people. So, I mean, for the last 10 years, that's all I've really known. And then... Um, so for me, it seems like the world's quite, quite bloody Christian. Um, but, uh, you know, I hope, I hope the trend goes that way. Like I see, you see with Jordan Peterson and guys like that, where it's like, instead of, you know, for, for me, when I, uh, say when I became a Christian in 2005 and started looking into it, I was watching debates and it was Richard Dawkins and he's debating, uh, like the Christian apologists, you know. Yeah, those were really sort of toxic debates. Hey. They were really sort of toxic debates, uh, I recall. Like it, there, 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 there was real uh, animosity, I remember that. Yeah, it's, it seemed like it really was like militant atheism. and um, But for me, it was kind of the, um, the Christian dudes, Richard Dawkins, were debating. I was like, hang on a minute, there kind of is something defendable on the uh the christian side of it too like if you watch any of them debates i don't think it's it's one it, that's definitely not one sided. i think there's good points on both sides but like now we're seeing say guys like jordan peterson who are bringing in that other element which might just be the cultural and the metaphorical side like they're sort of saying let's not throw the uh, baby out with the bathwater. if you know what i mean do you believe that as a Christian, it's your job to sell Christianity to others? Because uh, there, there used to be uh, 
uh, going back to what you're talking about, these debates that, you know, if you're a Christian, it should be uh, a private uh, belief. But do you see it as your role to basically spread the spread the gospel to others? Yeah, I, I pretty much I carry around my testimony um, and then and my uh, has a link to my YouTube channel. So like if I get a chat going with someone, I'll be like, hey, mate, have a read of this, you know, hit me up or give me a call. So yeah, for me, I, I definitely do. Like I share my, I share my faith. I share this culture. Like for me, say for myself, I will say, um, yeah, Jesus might save your soul, but he'll also save your life. Like there's, there's a whole lot of good there and, uh, just for community culture lifestyle. And, um, you know, even if you're like, dude, do you want to, do you want to save your life? You know, make your life better. Like I, I do believe that there's so much positive stuff there as a culture and a community, you know, and then there's the, the deeper spiritual side of it. So I'll, I'll, I'll tell people and encourage them and, uh, probably build a friendship with people, you know, and start from there. Like, guess I don't care where you're at, whatever, if you're gay or a drug addict or bloody whatever, you're a Muslim or militant atheist, who, who gives a crap? I don't care. Like I'll be your mate and wherever you're at, we can, you can go from there if you know what I mean. Now you've uh, helped set up the, the Proud Boys Australia, which, uh, they're actually the uh, brainchild of uh, Gavin uh, McGuinness, who's a very prominent uh, alt-light uh, commentator uh, in the United States. He's originally from uh, Canada. Now, um, what I basically know about the, the Proud Boys is it's basically an organization to uh, try and reclaim the, the the values of, you know, masculinity because they've been under such attack from, uh, uh feminism and, you know, the, uh, the, the social re-engineers. Uh, so can I ask you a bit about, uh, what you want to ac accomplish with the Proud Boys Australia? Mm. Um, I mean, simply we're, we're just a drinking fraternity with a political problem. Like, um, the, Biggest part is we we're just a bunch of dudes who go and have beers once a month, and um, yeah, I think it's good for men. Like men need to, I think men, and this isn't just white men, you know, because we're open to you can be you can be any race or any religion, right? But you have to be a Western chauvinist. Like uh, you, you can't be a we we say. We will not apologize for the creation of that's the not a world. dirty word for you. The, the chauvinist, eh? yeah, the, the yeah. Chauvinist. yeah. I mean, it's definitely it's that word's been put in there to stir the pot, you know what I mean? And, um, and it's not a male chauvinist, it's a Western chauvinist. So, if you were to, you know, we're extremely patriotic. That's what it is. We, we love the West. The West is the, the greatest place to live. That's why people want to live. That's why people want to freaking mass migrate here. We're the freest, greatest nations on the earth. And, and you shouldn't apologize. No, none of us should apologize for what we've created. Now, uh, obviously based on your, uh, rants, uh, uh it's clear that uh, we face uh, plenty of uh, problems uh, in Australia, and uh, that's also what uh, we focus on at The Unshackled, that pr probably one of the biggest is this uh, wave of political correctness that's crept over all of Australian society, where if you say something that's, you know, interpreted as, you know, bigoted or whatever, you know, you, you, you can basically uh, be... Uh, sh uh, sh shamed publicly, you can uh, l lose your job. I mean, it's it's really getting to uh, insane levels. And of course, we don't have free speech in Australia with not just uh, 18C of the Racial Discrimination Act, but uh, in Victoria, we have the, the Racial and Religious Tolerance Act. And then there's the, the Human uh, Rights Commission telling us about how horrible and, and bigoted we are. And of course, it's uh, amplified by the, the left controlling our institutions and uh, the media as well. Yeah, we're, we're definitely, 
you know, I do think it's like cultural Marxism, you know, where it is, you know, I thought to myself, you know, what's cultural Marxism? It's the controlling all means of production, you know, whether that be economically or politically. Well, this is cultural Marxism. They want to control all the means of culture. That's, you know, they're in education, they're in media. Like you look at Israel Folau and, you know, they're getting in, they're into sports. Look what happened with the Commonwealth Games. They're, they're, they're saturating our society. The, the LGBTQI have lobbied the police force and the military. It's like, it's everywhere, you know. There, there's almost no escape. But um, at, at the end of the day, I think they are the radicals because, you know what, I, I've never, I've, I haven't bumped in, into any real racist people or any extreme person who hates gays or hates women or you know wants to go back to the stone age like i think that's just the buddy it's make believe from the wet from the left you know what i mean and basically you're right everything's become political now i mean you know sports an obvious example example i mean it's not just israel falau uh you're based in queensland so i'm not sure how uh how much you follow afl but that has been captured by pretty much every lobby the lgbt lobby the islamic lobby uh they, they even have a environmental uh green uh, policy as well it's it's just terrible and uh we've also seen uh, health organizations are not immune from this uh it's science as well i mean it's it, it's just everywhere organizations which we thought were just focused on uh, us you know uh, a health organization focused on health outcomes they still push this you know politically correct uh, often uh, uh feminist uh, like you mentioned L L lgbt uh, it, it's it, it, it's yeah, and this is why I think a lot of, I mean, Australians are not that interested in in politics really. But there's a lot of people are saying enough is enough is enough. They're just, you know, I've I've just had it. This is, you know, we've got to get political to to fight this. Yeah, I mean, we've definitely. I think what's happened is people have been obviously. It's like you know they they call you a Nazi if 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 you say anything outside of the dot points, you're a Nazi, you're a uh, Islamophobe, you're homophobic, you're all these names. And, and so many people, that how this has crept in on every aspect of life is, you know, they're, they're bashing you over the head every time you're like, hang on a minute, like this is a little bit over overreach. That minority is, you know, whatever minority they're, they're pushing on whatever sphere, people have been so afraid to say anything. For so long and and this that's what what's happened here you know what i mean and it's slowly encapsulated a whole bloody society and i think like now now we're at this point and but that is the vehicle that got us here it's the vehicle of we're all like you know the fingers started to get pointed at us and we're like oh, i'm not actually homophobic or i'm not actually misogynist or islamophobic or any of these things you know i'm, I'm just like a normal guy and you, you you put your hand up and want to say something you know like oh, hang on a minute um i don't really and then quickly the finger almost gets put in your face and they start calling your name so that's how we've got here and and i think we're at the point where people are saying like i'm sorry we are going i'm going to stand up and say something now like you can't call someone a nazi or whatever name uh a thousand times it's lost it's there's no more sting in these words i i think it's definitely i mean australians have always been uh, pretty laid back but also we've been pretty trusting of our institutions like we never thought that the left would co-op everything and begin to attack things as australia day and now they've even started attacking anzac day we we, we always thought that uh you know we vote for our government and uh you know we put our kids into school we trust that the teachers are going to teach them to to read and write there's there, there there's been there's been this uh, t too much of a uh or belief or, or acceptance that uh, we, we can just always have faith in uh, our institutions and it's uh, there, there's a lot of people who have um, 
uh, woken up, but uh, it's definitely a challenge to to get uh, a lot of people who just by nature are disengaged to to get them to say, hey, you've you know re you've really got to make sure this doesn't get any worse, otherwise you'll be next. Yeah, well, like I think that's right. Like we have we've trusted the institutions to do the right thing by us you know we we thought oh the conservative politicians that they, they've got our backs and even for me even the churches like oh yeah a lot, of, a lot of the churches like we thought like i think i think a lot of australians like we're at work we're working our asses off and this probably goes this goes for a lot of the western world like we're working our asses off then we're spending time with our family and friends then you might go to your church or whatever and you know we kind of we've been just trusting these institutions to look after our you know our culture or the way we do things and they haven't they haven't looked after us and, and that's why like for myself i think i remember going to remember the reclaim australia rallies and uh so many patriotic australians there and a lot of them are, are like militant atheists and a lot of them would say like i would talk to them i'm a christian you know um and they'll be like where are the churches where are the christians and i'm like you're bloody right like where the fuck are they like where are the conservative politicians i, I don't know where they are like you've got your you guys like in brisbane we've got like the one nation uh you know, Steve Dixon and Malcolm Roberts and um, Shyle Lal uh, Lyle Shelton from the Australian Conservatives, you know, they're out and about, they're getting amongst it, they're going to rallies, they're freaking doing the petitions and, and rallying the troops finally, like something's happening, you know what I mean? But we need to get, we're like, this is just the beginning really of the conservative uh, side of things, I, I believe. Now, probably one of the, the hot button issues in uh, Australia is uh, mul multiculturalism. Uh, now, uh, based on uh, watching your videos, you don't have a problem with multiculturalism uh, per se. You, you know, talk about, you know, you uh, accept people of, you know, other religions and cultures, but there's obviously good cultures and then there's bad cultures. Yeah, like... <laughs> I mean, I, I think, I think for myself, what, what's going on in Australia and, and going on in the Western world, this is what it comes down to. It's like, if I go on my street, there's a family across the road with three kids, another family with two kids, another family with one kid and another family with no kids. Do you know what I mean? So what's happening is, there's four couples, there's eight adults, and they've created six children. So every generation, we're losing 25% of our population. So the, you know, we're bringing in all these immigrants because we need the, uh, for economic purposes, like we're not having enough kids. We need, as people retire and leave the workforce, we need skilled labor to come in, right? My, my greatest concern is if we're bringing people in and they're getting on the dull, we're not fixing the economic problem, are we? You know, like, I don't give a crap what colour your skin is or where you come from, but I, I think if, you, if you're not going to participate economically and you're going to be up to no good, you shouldn't be here. Like, send them back. Send me back. If I, if I break the law, I'll, I'll, they will send my ass back to New Zealand. Yeah, we actually have quite a, a big problem in Australia with uh, <laughs> criminal Kiwis. There's a lot we're trying to deport. <laughs> Yeah, and they should be sent back. Like, if if I get up to no good, man, that's I'm going back to New Zealand. Like, it's a uh, it's simple, and that's the way it should be for everyone. If you're up to no good, one rule for everyone, you know. I I definitely say that uh, immigrate immigration or. Uh, 
uh, I'd say, uh, put it bluntly, the end of the White Australia policy. I would say that hasn't been bad for Australia, but we've got to make sure that the people we're accepting, and we have accepted throughout the past uh, uh, 50 years, people from Asia and India who've made uh, great contributions uh, to, uh, to Australia, successful uh, business people, but uh, it doesn't mean that everyone we're accepting in is is good. And, and obviously in my home state of Victoria, we've got a large uh, problem with the the uh, Su uh, Sudanese community, and which you know, we need to have uh, a com conversation about that. And you're obviously in your videos quite critical of uh, Islam. I mean, you've um, studied the the Quran uh, quite a bit, and it's not just what's in there; it's what we're seeing in some uh, Islamic uh, communities as well, which is problematic. Yeah, like. It's funny how you say the like you've got the Sudanese community down in Melbourne, right? <laughs> well, when I was in high school um, in Brisbane, there was heaps of Sudanese Muslims at my school, right? I used to play basketball with them every afternoon. Now, like, get this story, right? Uh, for year, like, say for a year or two, we'd play basketball, and they would share their faith, like their Islamic faith, with me. I remember one particular day a they were like, oh, this guy's coming down from the mosque and he's going to preach to us today. I was like, oh, yeah, this will be interesting. The dude came down, right, he's like Pakistani. He told me back in 2005, I was 17 years old, he told me, he, he said to like 20 of us, right, there was myself and a Filipino guy and everyone else was African Muslim. He said there will be war on the streets in this nation. He, and he, he said that is what... That's what this guy was saying. He's pretty much quoting the Quran and preaching to us from the Quran saying this is going to happen. And like at the time I had no idea, but you know, back in 2005, it was that year, the end of that year, Cronulla riots happened. You look what I remember when, the, you know, when ISIS sent that letter out saying there's going to be war on the streets, you know what I mean? And for myself, I thought, Holy crap, what that dude said to us in the park back 2005, it's actually like, it's happening. <laughs> and the worst part of that for me is the Muslim young Sudanese guys um, who I was playing basketball with, my mates, they were good dudes. But I tell you what, the, the greatest problem with Islam is, is it only takes one radical guy like that to come around any of them young men and say, hey, boys, you're living like Westerners, you're drinking and smoking and you've got girlfriends, and the only way you can uh, atone for your sins is by jihad and killing people. Like, it's, it's dangerous. Yeah, I mean, that's a pretty alarming uh, pro uh, prophecy. I'd never thought Islam was that bad. Of course, like... Um, for me, growing up, no joke, like last week, me and my wife went and saw Aladdin at the buddy, <laughs> the entertainment center, whatever it is, right? And uh, as, a, as a kid, I thought Arabs and Muslims were like Aladdin. I liked them. I thought they were cool. And then, you know, it was when I grew up and lived around Muslims, and then you hear, hear them saying crap like there's going to be war on the streets, and you think... Mm, there's a dangerous side to this belief system, hey? And, and that maybe not to say that all of them are like that. I, I would say the bulk majority of them are probably living like Westerners. And the danger is it only takes one radical to come along and put this crap in their heads. And uh, you don't want to be on the, uh, the end result of them bloody acting out violently, you know? Yeah, it's, it's certainly the case that the more uh, Islam that you have in a nation, uh, the more, you know, it's not just terrorism, there's things such as uh, child brides, female genital uh, mutilation, uh, women are forced to, to cover up in the, in the streets. So there's, there's a whole range of, of uh, consequences. And I think it's right to say, you know, we want to stem basically the growth of, of Islam. Yeah, absolutely. I think um, what we need to do in Australia is make sure we're not letting in too many Muslims. Like, there's plenty of 
Latinos and Filipinos and Christian Nigerians and buddy, you know, many people we can let into this country who are going to be great contrib like they're going to put in a good economic contribution to our society. And they just don't have that radical side, uh, to their belief systems. You know what I mean? And, and I, I wouldn't say, uh, get rid of all the Muslims or anything radical like that. I would say what we need to do is just slow down on letting in as many Muslims and maybe let's just let in a few more uh, Catholics or Protestants or atheists or Buddhists or Hindus. You know what I mean? Now, I want to talk a bit about your, your home state of Queensland. It was once considered the, the most conservative uh, state in Australia. Uh, you had uh, the, the premier there for 20 years, uh, Sir Joe Bjorki Peterson, he was an uh, unashamed uh, conservative in every sense of the word, but under the, the current uh, Labour government of Anastasia Palaszczuk, who's just been re-elected in a majority government, you, uh, the state seems to be taking a sharp uh, left turn. Uh, uh, we, talk, we talked before about uh, uh, safe schools, or well, it's not called safe schools anymore, but the, the LGBT agenda in Queensland with the, the gender bred uh, person teaching all these gender bending concepts to, to school children. And you had the, the, the most politically correct uh, Commonwealth Games uh, ever produced. Uh, the, the opening ceremony was all about indigenous culture and uh, uh, volunteers were told not to say good day or uh, have uh, gendered uh, language. It really seems like you're actually giving my home state of Victoria a run for its money with, with how far left your uh, government can turn the state. Yeah, I think, um, like, honestly, I think when Campbell Newman was in, he went too hard and it put a bad taste in the mouth of Queensland is like all the job cuts he did. Uh, it wasn't good. Um, people got afraid economically, you know what I mean? And the thing is this election, they, the guy who ran for liberal national party was, um, Campbell Newman's treasurer. Like that was just the dumb idea. Who the hell thought to put that guy into a leadership position? I think they're bloody idiots. Um, but yeah, like what has Anastasia done for Queensland? Nothing but political correct bull crap. And what is she doing? She's trying to just, you know, it's the nanny state all over again. Like, uh, mate, we've, we've seen, we have like the lockout laws in the Valley. We've got the, the scanning your ID past 10 o'clock at night. You can't have shots of alcohol past 12 o'clock. You know, they've got, like you said, Commonwealth Games, you have to use gender neutral bloody language. You can't say g'day mate. What the hell's going on with this state, you know? And the gender bred man, you know, person. I, I'm having to the gender bred person, sorry, it's the gender bred person. Uh, the the new uh, LNP opposition leader Deb Frecklington she seems quite with it. I mean she's opposing uh, all of this uh, uh, crazy stuff. But of course uh, she's powerless to to stop any of it because uh, in Queensland you have uh, one house of parliament, and because Labor has a majority there, they can pretty much do whatever. I mean at least in Victoria we have a conservative block in the upper house, which it actually stopped Daniel Andrews in, in introducing uh, non-binary certificates so we haven't gone that far yet uh, and that's that's on the the Palaszczuk government's agenda too yeah they were um when we we're at the safe school rally um a few weeks back there were there was talk of it I think it was that week that they um they bought that in well they, they were trying to bring it in so like I, for me it's it's everything they said wasn't going to happen on the gay boat they're trying to bring in. Like they, they all, they were all saying, you know, no, no, it's just the vote for gay marriage. And, you know, it was, uh, John Howard, Tony Abbott, Corey Bernardi, all these guys were saying, if you don't, if you're worried about what could happen, just vote no, because, you know, we all heard, uh, that they were, we all knew about this gender neutral language and the bloody gender fluidity, all, all the 
pseudoscience theories and nobody um, taking gender off birth certificates. We all seen the writing was on the wall when the, the gay vote happened, you know, and I think the, um, I'm not sure if it was Anastasia, but one of, one of them said that when we, when we voted, yes, we, we agreed to all of this, you know, well, I don't think Queensland is, I don't think Australia did. Yeah, it's uh, and it, w it was interesting to view the Yvette Darcy Attorney General say we've got to do all this uh, stuff because of uh, marriage equality. And I heard uh, also a transgender activist uh, uh, say the same thing. And uh, added to, to that, it's uh, this none of this was voted on at the the, the just past state election last uh, November. It's all it, it's almost like. Uh, Labor se uh, second term, the the mask is off now. You know we're going to you know remake uh, Queensland in this progressive left image. Yeah, that. I mean, I I have a little theory. I kind of think that they, you know, they do like to play who's the most progressive. You know what I mean? And you see it between nations like Australia, New Zealand, Canada, Amer America, the United Kingdom, and Ireland. And it's like, they all try to play who's the most politically correct. You know, they try to outdo each other, showing how it's all a virtue signal. None of it's real. I'll just move. I need to get my charger hooked up to my phone or else I'm going to, I'll bloody miss you. Sorry, mate. Um, you're all right. You can keep talking. But I'll tell you what, it's all a virtue signal. None of this is real. Like, I doubt these people give a shit. Like, honest to God. Pardon me for swearing. <laughs> uh, 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 it's all good. Yeah, it's certainly wherever uh, Labor governments uh, go, it seems, I mean, they're fully on board with, with this sort of uh, so social agenda now. Yeah, <clears throat> I mean, I wonder what's going to be next. You know, I think it, I wonder if it will be, uh, I think they'll, they'll try to, if they bring in, you know, they take the, uh, gender off birth certificates and it's full safe schools i mean what is going to be next are they going to lower the age of consent are they going to bring in polygamy like what are they going to do are they going to kick down your church door and say you can't say that they're going to start burning books like what is next i don't know how like how much do they want to tax us you know we're, we're at a point now where They've got their hand in your wallet. They're taking all your money. They're telling you what to think and say. They're trying to raise your kids for you. I mean, I don't. I have no interest in it. I have no interest in that. And they're out of control. That's what they are. They're like in love with. They're in love with control. That's what these people are. They have that. That's what it has to come down to. They're control freaks. I certainly would, I wouldn't put uh, anything past them uh, at this stage and uh, we're both uh, doing our best to, to make sure uh, you know, we, we keep on top of these things and keep these people uh, to account. So I've, I've certainly enjoyed our chat, uh, Ben. Uh, keep fighting the, the good fight up there in Queensland and when I'm up next, uh, we should certainly catch up for uh, a drink and I may visit the, the Proud Boys. Yeah, mate. Sounds awesome. Uh, and uh, and hopefully our uh, viewers they 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 weren't too disorientated by you constantly moving the camera. Yeah, sorry, I bloody I was out out this morning doing a whole lot of crap and didn't realise my phone wasn't on charge. So you're probably going to be motion sick watching this. <laughs> yeah, uh, it, it's. Uh, and like you, like you said, it's your style. It's basically just mobile, mobile camera having having a rant. So you brought it to the the, the podcast. Next time I'll be half pissed for you, mate. <laughs> oh, that'd be probably an interesting show. I don't think we've done much drinking and broadcasting, but uh, maybe we'll give it a go. Mate, you probably swear twice as much, but you'll be right. <laughs> uh, take it easy. Cheers, mate. Thank you. 
All right, everybody, that's the show for today. I would encourage all of you to go over and subscribe to uh, Ben's channel, and he'll be able to bring you uh, all the uh, next events coming up in Brisbane. There is another big event coming up in Melbourne soon, which would I encourage uh, all of you in the area to attend. That is the No Snowflakes Pub Night, hosted by Avi Yemeni and Sydney Watson. It is on Friday the 1st of June at 7pm, and will be held in the South Yarra area. Tickets are free and can be booked via Eventbrite. Our friends at Liberty Works, their next upcoming event is a Jew, Muslim and Christian walk into a bar featuring Avi Yemeni, Imam Tawidi and Kira Lee Smith with Professor James Allen as the Devil's Advocate. It is on Thursday the 17th of May at 7pm at Mount Gravitz Bowls Club in Brisbane. Our Sydney and Melbourne events will be announced shortly. Tickets can be bought at libertyworks.org.au. Also don't forget if you want to take the Unshackled even further and score some awesome rewards in the process, please consider becoming a patron of the Unshackled at patreon.com slash the unshackled also we have our online store upright market where you can purchase unshackled merchandise and other gear for right thinking people so thanks once again for your company and we'll see you next time thanks for tuning in to the unshackled waves please visit the unshackled waves.net for all the ways to subscribe and follow the show don't forget to pick up your free ebook at the unshackled battlefield and keep checking out theunshackled.net for all the latest news and commentary.